This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. Police are vigorously searching for three armed men who tied up a family and sexually assaulted an adult female at a home in the Marshall Road community in southern New Providence early Sunday morning. Sometime around 4 a.m., the suspects burglarized the home, tied up the occupants, and robbed them of an undisclosed amount of cash before fleeing. The female, who is reportedly a member of the armed forces, was sexually assaulted. Again, police are aggressively investigating. A 46-year-old man is in police custody being questioned in relation to a stabbing incident that leaves a 48-year-old man in hospital. The incident reportedly occurred shortly after 2 p.m. on Saturday when the two men were at a business establishment in the Stapleton Gardens area where they got into an altercation which turned physical and one of the men produced a knife and stabbed the victim to the upper body. The victim was taken to hospital where he is detained in serious condition. A 69-year-old female is in hospital nursing injuries to the leg after being shot in the Ross Corner area last night. Police say the woman was taken to hospital in a private vehicle after discovering that she was shot to the leg. Preliminary reports reveal that sometime around 8.30 p.m., police were alerted via shot spotter that gunshots were being discharged in the area. On officers' arrival to the Ross Corner area off East Street, they were informed that the woman was standing in the area of a business establishment when she was shot. Police are appealing to members of the public who may have information to assist in locating the suspects responsible for any of these incidents to contact them at 919-911 or Crime Stoppers at 328-TIPS, that's 328-8477, to send information anonymously. Meanwhile, in other crime news, seven males are in police custody after they were arrested for allegedly being in possession of over 390 pounds of marijuana. Police making those arrests after officers attached to Operation Ceasefire executed a search warrant on a home on Munnings Drive Sunday afternoon. Sometime around 12.20 p.m., police searched the home and found 15 croca sacks of the suspected marijuana. The drugs have an estimated street value of over $39,600. Meantime, three Cuban nationals have been handed over to the Department of Immigration after they were discovered on Anguilla Key off Bimini. Police say sometime around 2 p.m. on Saturday, the Cubans ages 44, 39, and 33 were spotted by the occupants of a private vessel who were on a fishing trip. The illegal migrants were subsequently arrested and handed over to the immigration authorities for further processing. Police searching for the culprit who robbed a service station on East Bay Street shortly before 8 p.m. on Sunday. The suspect, who was wearing a plaid shirt and an Adidas tam, entered the establishment armed with a handgun and demanded cash. The male was successful in robbing the service station of an undisclosed amount of cash before fleeing the area on foot in an unknown direction. And Abaco police seeking the public's assistance in locating a vessel that was reported stolen from the Caroline White's dock on Abaco. Police reports indicating that the vessel, a 26-foot white center console custom-made hull boat with a green bimini top and a gray 200-horsepower Yamaha engine, was stolen sometime around 11 a.m. on Friday. On Tuesday, January 10th, Bahamians will pause to recognize a very important day in the nation's history as we celebrate majority rule with a national holiday. Oftentimes, many citizens, residents, and visitors do not know or understand the reason for a national holiday, and majority rule is oftentimes one of those occasions. For those that would like to have a refresher or learn for the first time what majority rule in the Bahamas is all about, Fred Mitchell, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Public Service, shares these historic details. Tuesday, the 10th of January 2023, we mark 56 years since majority rule came to our country, following three centuries of domination by a racial minority in our country. By the time 1967 came along, the property vote, the company vote, and the discrimination against women and law had all been abolished. On that day, the Bahamian Times, the PLP's newspaper, ran the headline, Bay Street Rule is Broken. Lyndon Pinling became the premier of the country on that day and led us international independence. On the way to 1973, he lowered the voting age in the country from 21 to 18. So here we are today, sovereign and free, and plotting our own destiny. Sir Arthur Folkes, the former Governor General who signed the act into law to make Majority Rule Day a public holiday, called this day the most important day in our history since the abolition of slavery. 
Mr. Mitchell invites the general public, regardless of political or religious persuasion, to join the service at St. Agnes Anglican Church at 10 a.m. on Tuesday to mark the occasion of majority rule. Following the church service, there will be a march beginning at about 11.30 a.m. from St. Agnes to Sir Lyndon Pinling's Mausoleum on Nassau Street. Meanwhile, on Grand Bahama, celebrations for the 56th anniversary of majority rule will begin with activities at 1 p.m. on Tuesday with a march of students, uniformed organizations, and marching bands departing Christ the King Church and headed towards downtown Freeport, where more events will take place. Minister for Grand Bahama, Mrs. Ginger Moxie, encourages all to come out and participate. And finally, 13 homes are being repaired in East Grand Bahama by the Ministry for Grand Bahama and the Ministry of Finance, targeting elderly residents as well as those with disabilities whose homes were destroyed during Hurricane Dorian in September of 2019. Minister for Grand Bahama, Ginger Moxie, accompanied by a team of project officers, toured the homes on Friday past and spoke with not only the contractors but some of the residents, all of whom expressed joy and excitement at being able to move back into their homes within weeks. Mrs. Moxie said she thought it was uh, important to come out and see some of the work that was being done as the community pulls itself together. Building contractor Reverend Lawrence Lang was also present and explained that the homes were repaired from between McLeanstown and High Rock. It is anticipated that the third phase will begin in February. And that'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jorino Saunders. Thanks for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.